Hi guys, it's uh, Sam for Digital Meat, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be making a fully dynamic um, parachute. And uh, the style of parachute that we're going to do, we're going to try making this kind of thing. So, uh, this is a static jump parachute, kind of like you'd see in uh, uh, the guys jumping out of the planes in World War II. I think they still use them actually. Um, but yeah, this is the type of parachute we're going to make, and it's going to be fully dynamic. So. Uh, we'll have dynamic splines for the strings and stuff. Um, we're going to be making the actual parachute itself from a soft body. And uh, I'm just going to put, a, uh, it's going to be carrying a crate, something simplified, just so uh, you can see how the rig's set up. So let's get dug in. Let's get rid of this. Okay, for the actual parachute itself, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Let's uh, get our lines on so we can see what's going on. Segments I'm going to put up to 36 because I think Let's have a look at um, No, that's not what I want. I want What am I doing? Uh, there we go That's what I want wireframe There we go. So yeah, that looks pretty symmetrical to me That's good Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm first of all, I'm going to make sure the radius for this um, So that's 100 centimeters, is it? Okay, so let's just create a box That's right, so that's that's two meters So I'm going to make the radius for this 250 meters. So the actual span of the object itself uh, is going to be about five meters. Um, in fact, I could crank that up so yeah, it's a little bit more. That'll do six meters. Yeah, why not? That'll do nicely. So, what I'm going to do is make this sphere editable. Uh, I'm going to go into point mode, I'm going to go to my rectangle selection and only select visible elements. I'm going to turn off. Tolerance selection, I usually have that on. But uh, I'm going to go into a side view and basically cut off the bottom of this thing. So delete those points. Now we're left with a little hemisphere there. Now what I'm going to do is um, uh, I'm going to select loops. So if I um, go into polygon mode so I can select polygons. And to get into loop selection, you can either go up to select at the top here and uh, there you go, you'll have loop selection, or you can use this shortcut, UL. That's what I usually do. UL, so now I can select loops. <clears throat> so, let's start selecting our loop, shall we? All right, so there's one, there's another one. I'm holding shift so I can select multiple loops without deselecting my previous selection. I'm just going to go around like this. I'm choosing every other one here. There we go. So we should have every other every other one. That's fine. And now what I'm going to do is right click, choose the bevel tool. And I'm going to pull this out. Ah, now it seems like I'll. Oh, that's because I don't want a bevel. Idiot. I want extrude. So then we extrude out like this. That should be enough. Go back to my selection tool. I'm just going to go underneath the object here and I'm going to get rid of these. And in fact, I can demonstrate why I'm going to get rid of them now. What we're going to do is we're going to get a subdivision surface and put the sphere in. Oh, by the way, if uh, you have your sphere selected, and you hold alt and select this subdivision surface the sphere automatically becomes a child of it so it's just a little tip there so you can see our smoothed out shape it's kind of looking like a parachute but um you'll also see that the uh you've got this like round curve at the bottom the thing that's causing that are these uh these these bottom uh let me just turn that grid off you go to filter grid you get rid of that grid. Okay, so let's select our sphere, go into polygon mode. 
I've got two of them selected already, so I'm just going to go round um, and select these. In fact, I just thought there's a massively quicker way of, uh, of doing this, and that's if I go back into my rectangle selection and go into the side view, I can actually select all of this lot at the bottom, and then I think it's Control to deselect, deselect all of them, and we should be left with those selected. So now we can delete all of them. And now when I turn that back on, you can see that it's a lot more, there's no rounding off at the bottom. But we do have another problem. And it's this pinching at the top here. So if I turn off the uh, subdivision surface. Oh, I've actually made a slight mistake. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. If it'll allow me to go back that far. Yeah, here we go. And I'm going to deselect this ring at the top here um, because it actually pinches our mesh, which we don't want. So I'm going to deselect that. Right click, go back into our extrude tool. Extrude back out. That's good. Go back into our subdivision surface. What I might do is put that on first, then put that in, then take R, because then I can see what we're looking like on the fly then. There we go, that's better. And then, same thing again, I'm just going to go into my side view, go into my selection, rectangle selection, select all these at the bottom, unselect this lot here. We've got all those selected now. Delete them. There we go. That's rounded off nicely right now. Back to the top. That's not too bad, actually. Um, but if we turn off the subdivision surface... Uh, not sure about that. I was thinking about maybe welding these points up here, but then we're going to create tries here. I'm not sure I want to do that. So what I think I'm going to do is actually, yeah, I think I'm going to go into polygon mode and just select these. See what kind of result we're going to get from it. I think I might break this tutorial up into a couple of parts because uh, I get the feeling it's going to be a long one. So I should have uh, maybe modelled this before because, you know, it would have been quicker. Anyway, so we've got all of those. We'll delete those, turn our subdivision surface back on. Yeah, that'll do. Um, I don't think that's going to affect us in any way, so that's fine. Let's have a look at the... Uh... Yeah, that's not bad, that. I think I think that'll do the job we need it to do. Brilliant. Now, part of the reason I put it in a subdivision surface and pardon me, uh, didn't just model the uh, model it like that. In fact, if you're thinking, oh well, I can collapse this down now, don't, because we're going to be using a soft body on this, and we're also going to be using aerodynamics. And now to perform that kind of calculation on a mesh like this, um, your computer would choke. I mean, obviously I don't know what kind of computers you guys have, but um, mine's pretty good and it'd choke trying to work that out it, or, you know, to cache the simulation, it'd take ages. So we're actually going to perform the simulation on this mesh, which is a lot lighter. Okay, so now we got that. What next? Let's turn our grid back on. Okay. I think I'm going to move the whole lot up. <clears throat> A few meters, maybe. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm going to move it up five meters. So that'll be 500 centimeters. There you 
go. And then I'm going to create a little box. So I'm going to call, I'm going to rename this fear now. Parachute. If I could spell. Okay, then I'm going to create a box. Just like that. Okay, I think that might be a little bit too big, this cube. So um, go to object, make it a meter, maybe. Is that going to be too small? Well, I think that's going to be about right. And we know this is a meter by a meter. And just so it's on the, the ground level, what I'm going to do is move it down minus 50 centimeters because then the top of the box um, will be at zero and that's just so when I'm creating other objects it's helpful so I'm gonna call this white and put that underneath just so I know where I am and in fact because I know that um, uh, the amount of strings coming off the parachute and connecting to the box, I'm not going to have four. That's too too little. Um, I think I'm going to have eight. So I'm going to need points for those splines to connect to. So with the box, I'm going to up the segments. So now I've got one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points which I can connect to. And just to make this box look a little bit more uh, like something like a crate maybe or something like that, I'm gonna make it editable. Uh, in fact, I could use the loop tool there. Can I just do that? In fact, I can select all of them. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and then we can extrude in a like that and then maybe extrude just to give it a little bit of a thing like that and there we go that'll do us okay so what do we want to do next? I'd say we want to create a spline. So if we go up to this and what do I want to create? Hmm. Yeah, okay. That's it, we got a spline now. Type it's going to be linear. The points can be adaptive, I suppose. Um, that's fine. So we want to set up our spline so it's actually, uh, um, well, actually, we're going to need eight of these. So let's just copy this. Okay, and get rid of the original one so we can start from spline zero. Um, and I think uh, what I'm going to do is put it in a connect object as well because we're going to want to sweep along these splines. So it'd be pointless doing a sweep for every single one of them when we can just bung them all in a connect object. I'm just going to put them in order as well. And then we can use one sweep. That makes things a whole lot more simple. Uh, it must be frustrating watching me dick around doing this, but um, we'll get there in the end. So I'm actually going to put uh, these just here for a moment. So let's deal with let's deal with spline one. So spline one. Where, where are we going to have spline on? Well, I'm probably going to want it on this point of the box here. So, 
um, if we go down to the position, I've got I've got this point selected here, and in the position, uh, we've got object relative. I'm going to put that to world, and then I'm going to zero all of these out, and then apply. Goes to world zero, and I want it connected here. So as you can see, it's just off of minus 50. So let's just round that out. And now that's bang on minus 50. Let's take the other end of the spline. And we're going to want that. Well, actually, I'm going to zero it out first. So we, it's in the middle. There we go. And then we can go straight up. And we know it's in line then. And straight out. And then we can go up to this parachute here and we can have a look at where it's going to be. Now I'm doing this with the subdivision on the parachute turned on because obviously if you turn it off you can see that it creates a little bit of geometry and actually changes the shape of the edge. So I'm going to leave the subdivision on so I can estimate whereabouts. This is, you know, this isn't going to be exact but it will be absolutely fine for what we need it for. So there you go, that spline is there, Bob's your uncle, and then we're going to do the same thing with spline 2. So let's just have a look at these splines actually, um, if I go into point mode, select spline 1, is it point mode? There should be a way that I can see the direction. Maybe because it's in a connect object. Yeah, there, there we go. So we select. So we've got the white end down here. This is something important to note, just to keep it cleaner. Um, splines have a direction, direction of points, and I'd like to keep those in the same direction. So if we go to spline two, we can see that on spline one we've got the white end connected to the box and the blue end connected to the other one. So if we go to spline two move these out a little bit so there we go here's the white end so again I'm just going to zero out in fact can I do that for all of them I'm just going to move that back to where it was select all of these and zero them out no it won't let me do that in world I wonder if it will let me do object relative no unfortunately not uh, I might be wrong there but if anyone obviously knows how to move a load of points in separate objects at the same time shout give me a shout but I have to do these one by one for the time being okay so now we've got spline 2 we've got this point at world 0 um, spline 2 is going to be let's have a look this is going to be minus 50 and then we're going to move it this way as well so that will be minus 50 okay and then we're going to grab the other end of it We're going to zero this out. Apply. There we go. That's at zero. Um, I think that is going to be minus 50. And this is going to be minus 50 as well. Ba -ba -dum. Okay, cool. And for the time being, I'm just going to leave this somewhere up there because this is going to kind of be halfway between um, the next uh, this spline here and the and the next one, so spline three. So let's grab spline three. Point mode. Zero this out apply and we can see that that's going to be minus 50 so 
meet the edge of the box. There we go. Um, get the other end of it, zero it out. That's going to be minus 50. Well, actually, it doesn't matter because this is going straight up. Too far, if anything. And then we're going to pull it out. And uh, that's going to be around. So let's pull that down a bit. Pull that back and we can see that the points intersecting about there and pull it down so it's on the edge it needs to come this way a bit there we go that'll do us and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go around and do this for each spline I think I want to pause the tutorial here because there's no need for you to watch me do what I've already done three you know a couple of times all the way around this thing so I th think I'm going to pause here Okay, guys. I've been uh, I've been round and I've um, uh, uh, sorted out the position of all my splines, so they're in the right place. So there we have it. But if we render to the picture viewer, you can see you can't see the splines, and it's because we need to put a put a sweep in there. So let's go select the sweep, drag it down above our connect object. Drag the connect in. And we're going to need something to actually sweep across the spline. So if we go into here and grab a circle, that should be enough. Drag the circle, in, circle into the sweep. Uh, now the reason the circle isn't being swept across is because uh, we haven't got our connect object turned on. So if we turn that on, it will connect all those splines together. Cinema will see it as one object and um, sweep the circle across it. Obviously the circle is way, way too big. So let's turn the radius of that down. 0.8 of a centimeter should be enough. We can always change that later and go bigger. Now you can see that this looks black and it's because there's so many rotational segments um, that aren't actually needed because we're never going to see them. So let's... Uh, Select the circle. Intermediate points are adaptive. Let's make them uniform. And let's drop that down. What we got there? That's one. I think one should be enough, to be honest. Um, yeah, that'll be absolutely fine. Now, because these are these splines are going to be they're going to be bending. We're going to need some segments going up the length of them and obviously there isn't at the moment. So that won't be in the circle, that will be for each individual spline. So what we'll probably want to do here is um, grab all the splines, go into point mode and control A, that will select all the points in all the splines. Right click, go to subdivide, it says subdivisions 2 here. I think 10 should be enough. OK that. And then you can see we've got multiple points along the length of this now. That should be more than enough for what we uh, for what we want. So we can come out of point mode now. Go back into object mode. Unselect our, our splines. Now you can already see that I've got tags on here. I shouldn't have done that. I'll delete them. And they're spline dynamic tags, so our splines can bend. So if we select everything from spline 1 to 8, right click, go to cinema uh, hair tags, and then go down to spline dynamics, it'll add all these spline dynamic tags to our splines. And if we just hit play now, you can see the splines have got dynamics, they fall away. But we don't want that, we want them connected to the parachute and the box, uh, our crate at the bottom there. So let's deal with the parachute first. Select all these blinds again, one to eight, right click, hair, we want this constraint tag. Okay, so now we've got this constraint tag in. Let's have a look at the attributes for this. 
Right, we've got an object field here, which is the object that we want the splines to connect to. So if we select all of our constraints, because we're going to want to do this to all of them, and then drop this parachute in, because that's what we want to connect to. It should be the same for all our tags now, and it is. But it also needs to know what points of our spline are going to be connected to this parachute. So if we select our splines again, all of them, go into point mode. And I'm just going to get my rectangular selection tool here and select. Uh, actually, probably want to go into the side view. Just so we get the tops of our splines. There we go. We've got all the all the points on the top there selected and then we select all of our constraint tags again and then hit set that should bind all of these points to the um, you know all the positions on the parachute and we can just test that by going back into our scene you notice that all the point even when they're not selected these points are now displayed as yellow that means they've been set so if we hit play now, we can see that the splines are now connected to our parachute. Let's get a little bit more time on our timeline. 10 seconds should do it. Kind of looks like a little jellyfish. But um, so they're all connected now. So great. Now we need to do exactly the same thing for our box. So if we select all our splines again, right click, go to hair tags, constraint. We'll have a whole new load of constraints for that. So we've got all our spline selected. We go into point mode. And now we need to select all the points at the bottom. So just do that. Have a look. We've got all, all of them selected there. And then we select all of our constraints for the other one. It needs to know what we're connecting to again. And this time it will be the weight. And then we hit set. Now we can release those points. Go back to object mode. We don't need any of that selected anymore. Hit play. And all our cables are dynamic and attached to our parachute and weight. So that's that bit done. What I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to um, leave this as part one now. Um, so now we're at this stage and uh, we'll leave connecting up uh, our springs and setting up our soft body for the parachute for part two of this tutorial. So uh, tune back in for that, guys. Cheers. Bye.